What's up, guys? My name is Tech Number here for Troubleshoot, and today I've got a video for you on live streaming on YouTube. So, as you know, YouTube loves to change the way that they lay out their platform as much as the seasons change. So, of course, with 2020 comes a new live stream dashboard and a confusing new way to live stream on YouTube. So, heading across to your main YouTube page on your YouTube channel, in the very top right, you'll hit the little plus where you would normally upload a video. There's a little go live button. Clicking that will take you to this page over here. Now, of course, because I've streamed before, I'll be hitting a new stream. However, if this is your first time doing it, this is the page that you'll see. So what exactly is going on here? Well, at the top, we have a title. So I'll call this test stream two. I'll set the visibility to private so only I can see it. And then down here, we have the description box. Before you enter anything, it'll look like this, where it says add a description, but you can enter whatever you want. Hit enter a couple of times. It's multi-line, you can do as much as you want here as you would usually. Then right below that, you pick a category. So I'll leave it as gaming. And if you have gaming selected, you can select a game title. So I'll just pick a game that I'm playing now, Escape from Tarkov. Then we have a schedule for later, which will schedule a live stream. Just make sure that you actually start live streaming before this time in order for it to go public at that time correctly. Then we have enable monetization down here which will allow adverts to pop up during the stream, either from the bottom or those five second or 30 second adverts during the live stream. And then we have the upload custom thumbnail button over here. Clicking that, we can go ahead and pick any thumbnail, upload it as we usually would, and that's what it looks like. Then right below it, we have the copper compliance, yes made for kids, no not made for kids, I'll leave it at no, and we can set an age restriction to show to only 18 plus viewers if we so wish, but I'll leave it as is. Test stream two, private description, and we're playing Escape from Tarkov. Create stream. And now from this point, if you go ahead and check out your channel, you won't see the live stream anywhere. So heading to my channel, you can see nothing on the main page over here. Heading across to videos, you'll also not notice anything over here. This is a test stream that I did from before. Notice that it's test stream and not test stream two. Other than this, there are no other videos that match this description, the one that we just created. So a couple of things have changed. Over here on the stream settings tab are our stream key, where we put into OBS or our live streaming software. So as you can see, auto generated key. Each time you create a new live stream, this stream key over here will be different. So if you're comfortable with that, head across to OBS or your live streaming software, settings, streaming, and you'd paste the stream key in here after clicking the copy button. However, this changes every time you create a new stream. If you'd like a permanent stream key, then make sure to hit the drop down over here and click create new stream key. Then I'll just call it pick me. You can add a description if you want, and you can choose a maximum sustained bitrate that you want to support. So of course you can pick 4K, 2K, 1080p, etc, etc. I'll just leave it at variable bitrate and I'll enable 60 FPS. I'll click the drop down. And then I'll pick the pick me a variable that I just created now. It'll then load the settings and you can go ahead and copy your stream key because this will always stay the same as long as you have this stream key preset selected. So I'll paste that into OBS and I'll hit apply. Okay. Then before we go live, returning to the YouTube page, we can choose low latency or ultra low latency. Just note that ultra low latency does not support 2K, i.e. 1440p, 4K or closed captions, however low latency does. So I'll leave it at low latency because I'm currently recording at 1440p. Changing it to live stream at 1080 would be a bit of a nuisance. However, if you're wondering how big the stream latency is, ultra low latency can be anywhere between one to like five seconds, plus minus depending on how close you are to the server. Low latency can be three to 10 maybe, and normal latency can be anywhere between 10, 15, 20, possibly more seconds. Of course, over here, we also have the stream URLs that you'll be putting into OBS. If we head into settings, stream, you can either select a preset like I have here, YouTube primary server, but of course you can pick custom and enter the server URL itself. But I'll leave it as YouTube slash YouTube gaming and I'll tab back into my dashboard. Here we can enable or disable the DVR. Then you can also enable 360 degree video and you can add extra delay here if you'd like, 30 or 60 seconds. So I'd recommend doing it inside of your streaming software instead. Then we also have closed captions over here. However, you probably won't be using these unless you know what they're doing. Then under the analytics tab, we have some information on the current live stream. So of course there's zero concurrent viewers, 
chat rate is no messages per second, playbacks unavailable, and average watch time unavailable as well. Heading across to the stream health section, we have information on our current live stream that is going. Of course, there is no live stream currently going. It says connect streaming software to start the preview. Now, of course, before you go ahead and start streaming from OBS, you may want to double check your privacy settings. You can do that by hitting the edit button in the top right, and you can make sure that your privacy is set to public, unlisted, or private. I'll leave it at private, save, and I'll head back into OBS, and I'll start live streaming right now. After a couple of seconds have passed and the live stream has initiated inside of OBS, you'll notice a little pop-up saying stream is healthy under the stream health section. And shortly after that, you should see this preview come alive with whatever we're currently showing on screen. I have it set to a low latency, so this could be five to 10 seconds behind where we actually are. As you can see, OBS is still on my screen. I've moved it and now I've clicked on this window. Anyways, in the top right-hand corner, you'll see a new pop-up. Looks like you're ready. Click here to start live streaming. Now, as far as I know, you don't have to click this button immediately. As soon as you set it up to go live straight away and you start live streaming from OBS, you'll notice that people will start getting pop-ups on notifications on Discord, etc., etc., and they might be able to watch you stream. I don't exactly know how that happened, but it did for me at least. Anyways, hit the go live button and all of a sudden your stream will actually go live with the settings that you put into it. So edit, you'll still notice that the stream is still private, even though I clicked a go live button and you'd expect to make it public. Heading across to the analytics tab, you can see there are two concurrent viewers. As for who the second one is, I have no idea. I don't think it's anyone. I think this is just a miscalculation on YouTube side. If anything, there should only be one, which is the preview in the top left hand corner. Heading across to my YouTube channel, hitting F5 to refresh, you'll see a new video over here test stream 2 which is currently live. Clicking on it will let you watch whatever I'm currently live streaming right now. So heading back to the live streaming tab, I'm going to close out of my stream. Stream health, you can see some information on what's going on. If you're streaming at a much higher bitrate than what's supported, after a couple of minutes you should see a little pop up here asking you to turn it down. There we go, right as I talk about it. There it is. I'm currently streaming at 30 megabits per second, which is higher than the recommended bitrate. They recommend to stream at about 9,500 kilobits per second. Either way, I'm going to currently ignore that because I'm only doing a test live stream. As for the rest of the setup, that's about it. On the very right hand side, you have the live chat. You can hit the three dots and pop it out if you'd like. But besides that, that is about everything you need to know with the new live streaming dashboard and how to set it up and go live. To end your stream, make sure to head into OBS or anything like that and stop your stream. But of course, you can also end it using the end stream in the top right hand corner of the channel page. I'll hit end and you can see it's currently done. You'll see some statistics on the live stream and I'll hit done over here. Now, of course, tabbing into OBS, you can see that I'm still currently live. Heading across to my channel, videos, you'll notice that even though I'm still live streaming to YouTube server, because I hit that end stream button, my live stream is no longer here. I'm currently just streaming into the void. So I'll click stop streaming. And of course, if you don't have a stream key preset selected, then your stream key will be reset right about now. Hitting the back button in the top right will take you to this page over here where it shows you the scheduled live streams you have coming up. Closing out of that tab entirely, heading back to my YouTube channel. In the top right, I'll click my profile image, go to YouTube studio, then I'll go across to videos and you'll see that the live stream or VOD is not here. Heading across to the live tab, you'll see all of your VODs over here. Test stream two, one minute, 39 seconds. You can also see streams that you have upcoming or scheduled up here. And of course you can delete them if you so wish. Heading into test stream two, you're able to change the description, the title, the thumbnail, etc., etc., as if it was just a normal YouTube video. Then of course, once you're done, you can change it from visibility private to schedule as public or change it to public entirely. And that's about it. That is the complete YouTube live streaming crash course for 2020. This is probably how it's gonna be for quite a while unless they decide to dramatically change their current live streaming dashboard. It's a bit confusing to get used to the first time. However, once you've done it once, you'll probably remember how to do it all the time. Anyways, thank you all for watching. My name's been Technobo here for Troubleshoot. I hope this video helped you and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.